navigating on paper people it's a great pleasure hi all welcome to Balkan Bay Navy School there's our Jula, the Havaya 30, that's her model. And that's the Havaya 3025 that we're building, which is 5 feet shorter than the 30. That's all I could fit in here. Navigating on paper, people. It's a great pleasure. Imre, our amazing charts. Top quality paper. Uh, it's It's as waterproof as it can get but still be paper that you can write on with a pencil it says the legion okay it shows you it on a square that's good for when you're buying the chart gives you the scale and there's a lot of information on this in this chart and on its back this chart by itself can teach you all you have to know about navigation. So this is the Avaya 3025 Alvaca uh, Plo 1 Force 213. The inside's all done. Everything's polyurethane all over, ready to go. Just have to have the two flop down beds that flop off that wall down to here. And then you sleep from here and your feet go in there and it's luggage and it's the same on the other side and pros all have to be all the same on the other side because it's a, if it's a symmetric hull outside then it might as well be symmetric on the inside too and I believe that whatever you go on the one end you should have on the other so guys join a build there's the model and that's where we're going the back of the chart is full of information it's got all you need to safely navigate at sea but you must take the time to read it all and get all into it. Of course, I don't remember all the symbols. I don't have to. Because if I'm sailing in the legion and I see the symbols, I can always flip over the, car, the, the chart and find that symbol and understand, oh, it's a, oh it's, a, it's a this type of a bottom or it's a that type of a bottom, okay? I got it. It's all here. They teach you. They show you. They explain to you. You got the cardinals. The cardinals are amazing aids to navigation. They tell you these are the cardinals. He has the he has the danger. Okay, the north cardinal is on the north, telling you safe navigate north of me. You go north of me. The south one goes south of me. Danger signs, danger symbols. Okay. You see something at sea, you see a boy, if you don't know what that boy is, you can get in shit and you, can, you should run away from it. First thing is run away from it. When you see something at sea, keep as far as you can from it. If you don't know what it is, stay away. Okay? But it's better the day before you went over your chart and you looked for all the boys that should come on the way and you should use them as aids to navigation and you should sail according to them. I'm not going to say sail to them. I'm not going to sell sail by them. I'm going to say sail according to them. Therefore, there's one that's coming in three hours. I want to know that that one comes in three hours and I want to know what it is. Okay? If it's coming, if it's on my course, you get the area, you get life-saving signals. Okay? You get the surface currents. This is good stuff. This is prevailing winds. This tells you what's happening. This tells you how you can sail. This teaches you everything. Okay, this is the mil this is the Miltemi. This is a strong four, six, seven wind all summer. It blows. This is the Miltemi. It's a vicious wind. We sailed baby mana up against it, and we were beating hard. We were beating so so hard until we came into the Dardanelles, and then the Sea of Marmara, and then up the Bosphorus, and into the Black Sea. You get glossary, okay? It's translating words for the area that you're in. It's giving you, it's giving you, it's, it's a Google translator. It's giving you the important words. You've got small cloth symbols, okay? You've got all the little stuff, you know, that you, you'll find on the chart. You, you have abbreviations, all the letters. If there's letters all over the place and you don't understand, what do these letters mean? Building, uh, beacon, uh, and so on and so forth. 
heavily light on the chart has letters next to it. Okay? What do those letters mean? Let's say you go on F, so that's a fixed light. Okay? Let's say you go on FL, it's a flashing light. Let's say you go to Q, okay? It's a quick flashing constantly, okay? Every light you see on the chart has letters and numbers. FL 6, 10 seconds. It flashes 6 times in 10 seconds. There's no other light in this region that flashes that way. Okay, it might tell you the color, it might tell you more information, it will tell you the height, it will tell you how many miles away. But what you can do is now, you can find that light and you can find that light where it is to you. You only need one. If you find where it is to you, you've got to fix my friend. A learning fix. You can do it, there's many ways to do a learning fix. You need only one object. And you're set, you're fixed, you know your position, finished. Amazing stuff. And a great pleasure. Give you the Buford scale, so you can know if you're listening to radio, and you're listening to uh, weather forecast, okay, on the radio. So you'll hear the Buford scale, and then you can check out what is what is a force four. That's a Buford four, okay. Gives you the bottoms. Gives you all the types of bottom and all the type of cliff and all the type of stuff and all the type of elevations and all the type of. Or is it above water? Is it underwater? When is it coming out? When is it not coming out? Is it tidal? Is it not tidal? You get everything you want. It's all here on the back. You don't need nothing more than this, okay? Navigation is cool. Going to, going to, going to learn navigate to, going to learn competency and, and, be, and, and, and attending a course, a sailing course, that's something that I could never afford. I don't know why, they cost thousands of dollars. I, 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 I don't have that cash. So I learned all this myself. But it's real good stuff, and I suppose a good course will teach you everything you need to know. Okay, a skipper's course, let's call it. And you should use the stuff that you've learned, and you should navigate on paper. That's my opinion. You can have the chart plotter, you can use it. But I think you should prepare your navigation on paper a day before, which when you're sailing too much with a chart plotter and you get used to the ease, you forget this stage. You forget this step of doing my navigation, drawing out my course, writing down in a logbook, West Cardinal at 10 o'clock. According to this course, I should meet that West Cardinal at 10 o'clock. I write that in a logbook. I'll write it down. If I, if I can hold my course that way, at 10 o'clock I should see that West Cardinal, a mile off, okay? Or ahead. Well, I don't know where it is. I've got to fix. I'm finished. I'm ready to go, okay? So, then you get the traffic separation schemes, where you should keep, where you should stay. It's like driving a car. If you know how to drive a car, you know how to do that. And basically, amazing, amazing charts with so much info, everything you need. You just got to take the time to go over it, take the time to learn it. The beautiful side of the chart, the top side. So at the top, it will tell you the region. Okay, so this is the Aegean Sea, northern part. Who made it? Okay. And then you get small sections blown up. These are small bays or ports or important places, so they give them to you with more detail. This is this helps a lot, these little squares. I like them. The more they are, the better it is. Three compass roses on this one. I don't like using the land compass lows because it mixes me up. I like the sea ones. It's not always possible. Sometimes the chart is in such a way that the compass lows will be on land and you'll have to deal with it. But it's okay, we can do that too. So we got our latitude. 
and we've got our longitude. Latitude I use all the time to find how many nautical miles I have traveled. Because every minute is a mile and it's 60 minutes to a degree. So with that I just open it up on five miles and I can walk my course four times and I've done 20 miles. Piece of cake, you know. That's, that's an estimated position already. Already you know where you are. The most important thing about navigating is knowing where you are not. Not as much where you are. Because if there's a lock over here and I'm sure I'm not there, then I'm good. It's enough. I'm somewhere here and I'm going that way, but that lock, I know I'm not on him. These are the navigation tools I use. I have parallel rulers, the ones that wiggle away. I have 60-30 triangles. I use, I walk them along. But even two 90 degree triangles are good. Okay? Here at the moment, I have moved my course onto my compass. Here's my compass lows. This, this small square is going right through the middle. Yeah? And it's pointing on, I can't see how much, 330 magnetic. Here's my course. Here's my course. I'm sailing this line. I've just moved it over onto the compass. Finished. I'm done. I know where I am. I, I know and then I light it over here. 330 magnetic. I don't use uh, true. I'm not interested in true. I don't care about true. I've got magnetic compasses on board. Magnetic is what I want to know. Variation, okay, 3 degrees, 45, east in 2009, we're doing 5 annually, 5 uh, minutes annually, so this thing's moving, okay, so now it's 4 degrees already, okay, for one summit, because we're 10 years later at the moment, so, You draw out your course in the morning while you're having your coffee or you've done it a day before and, and you start thinking about where am I going and what am I going to pass on the way and what am I going to use to orientate me and tell me bang on where I am or almost where I am. Estimated fix or fix. Estimated position versus fix. They're not far apart. I use estimated positions all the way because I'm calculating stuff and I'm doing my calculations and stuff and I love getting the fix. Getting the fix is like getting a shot man, it's like whoa man, it's like the adrenaline just, that's what it is, okay. That's what it is, finding your position and knowing I'm here for sure and drawing it as a fix, you know. So let's say for example, let's say for example, I'm way out at sea, okay, I'm way out, I'm here, and I'm sailing here. Let's say for example, what I can do, okay. This is the beauty of, it's just trigonometry and you don't have to be smart, you don't have to be brilliant, you don't have to be anything, you just have to use your common sense and find ways to do stuff, to find where you are. So you're sailing this way, yeah, and you've got a light over here on the chart and it says I have to close in on him. And it says FL10S, 42 small M, 6 big M. Okay? Hope you guys can see. Okay? So it's this light over here. I can't see through my screen anymore, guys. So I'm sorry. Sometimes I'll be missing the thing with my finger because I just can't see the screen. Uh, got busted. So I got that one. And I said to him, okay, you're flashing. 10 seconds. Yeah. So you... I, I can't see him. Okay, I found him. So I got my light, and he's a flashing 10 seconds. He's a flash 10 seconds, okay? So it's one time, yeah? In 10 seconds, one flash every 10 seconds. He's 42 meters high, and he shines 6 miles away. Perfect. Thank you very much. I don't need more than that. I take my compass. He has 6 miles. From 50 to 56. Open my compass on 56 and I can just make a circle. Okay? 
I'm coming down. When I see you, I'm in that. I'm in. Now, of course, you have to calculate how high are you above sea level and all kinds of stuff. Are you standing on a very tall ship or are you close to sea level? Now, because I'm sailing plus, I'm almost underwater. So it's okay. It's all good. It's very close. Doesn't matter. It's not important because it's only an estimated position. But I have come into the circle on course. I'm roughly know where I am. I'm roughly very no much very good where I am. Because now I can maybe get a running fix of something else, or I can just keep on sailing to him. Doesn't matter. Because I know roughly where I am. I'm roughly good. When I get close, I'll think about it. I'll start orientating even better, okay? I'll start looking at the land. Let's say it was night time, so, so I might hang out, I might heave too for, for until sun comes up, and now, and now I'm, I'm sailing over here, and I just moved to here because I can see over here better what I'm doing. And I'll look at the topography, okay? I, the, the chart is so brilliant that it doesn't tell you only what's happening in sea, except for telling you depths. So if you have a depth sounder, that's another way to navigate. You can know where you are according to the depth under you. That's, so you're in the circle of this light, you're in the circle, and the depth is so much. That's, and you're on course this much. You, you, you're on a fixed man. Because you've got a bearing to him, and you're in the circle, and the depth under you is so much. It's a fix. It's a fix. You're fixed, man. So you're 200 meters to here or to there, it doesn't matter. It's not a problem. It doesn't matter. You're fixed. You don't need an electronic gauge to tell you everything. You can use it. I've used a lot of GPSs. People, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't use GPS. But I've never had a chart plotter. I've never had a chart plotter. I've always had to uh, uh, work off paper. Because the GPSs that I have had were very old, and they only had a few numbers. They would tell you a bunch of numbers and stuff. So you would have to find latitude, longitude, okay? And then you could find where you are according to the GPS. But I've always worked off paper, and I've tried to switch on that GPS as least as possible. And make my destination without switching a thing on even once. And in coastal navigation, that's how I've been doing it. And it's been a lot of fun. May the force be with me next year, 22 with the Avaya 3025, we do ocean sailing, we go offshore, we go into the unknown. This doesn't work anymore, my friend. Nothing works. You need a sextant now. You, within 24 hours, you really don't know where you are. You're lost. You can have a very good deviation chart of your compass. You can have a very good one, but even that's not enough. You need a sextant. You need to find your way. So... Let's, let's do that next year. But at the moment, that's what I've been doing. And from England to here, I've done this all the way. And it's, it's given me a lot of confidence. My logbook's also got a lot of good stories inside, you know. What a great pleasure. What a, it's so much fun. I mean, people that will... People, it's, it's like... Let's, let's go back in time a little bit. We're running. We're running too fast. We've, we've got lost in the run. But we, we're lost. We need our phones all the time to tell us where we are, where we're going, what we're doing, what, what time do we have to meet him, what time is she coming, when is, did I say, what do I have to buy, where am I going to buy it, hey, where is it, tell me where it is, oh, you have to turn right, turn left, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, over. she doesn't stop saying go back until you turn the car around. The future is in the past. Time is nothing. Doesn't exist. Working of paper is a pleasure and a confidence builder and experience that no electronic gadget can give you. So, people, the time has come. Let's make the change. Let's let's start let's start let's start working like the like the navigators of of once upon a time, you know? Of guys that went to sea. Of seamen. Of little seamen, hardcore, the little thing, you know. Welcome to male dominancy art poetry people. This is our channel. 
find us on YouTube, Facebook, Balkan Shipyards on Facebook. There's Balkan Bay, we're going to do eight serious navigation mistakes that I've done over the years. Since I've learned how to sail by myself because I couldn't afford the course and I messed up so big. So, so big. So I hang out in Bucky Bucks. This is Talevo Bay. This is my, this is my uh, Melina in South Bulgaria where I came to with Baby Mana in 2011 from England. I parked her here and then I sold her. Today she's at Sozopol and I started building Proas. This is Pro number four. This is, uh, this is one force, 213 because I believe that 13 is the most luckiest number there is. And I'm going 213, so 213. Two, That's my armor of make or break. He's my third pro. Very good boat. So strong and so capable and so seaworthy. It's a junk rigged pro. It's got the Le Shank. That's our Balkan shipyard shunting junk. Uh, I invented it two or three years ago, I don't remember. After plow number one and two were complete disasters, they flattened me and Genia to death. I've got flattened a lot at sea. I respect the sea so much because the force is so strong. You don't imagine the strength of the force until the force teaches you a lesson. We almost lost chip quite a few times and this, this sailing school, Balkan Shipyard Freestyle, is about big mistakes that I have done at sea, that I should have lost my ship, that I should have died and killed my wife. Mistakes that I, if I would have survived, I could not live with. They did not materialize to become that. Things worked, the force was with me, it saved me. Nothing happened except a fairly bad memory that, 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 that bites deep every time it comes into my mind. How long I was and what huge mistakes I've made. So Balkan Shipyards uh, Sailing School, yeah, Balkan Bay, welcome. So we got, uh, that's the rock, it's really there. We got our compass lows, yeah, we got our Cans and nuns. We got a drawer being built in the bay. That's uh, that's me. I've uh, I'm, I'm 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 assembling I'm assembling a big vaca. Uh, the Avaya 3025 Balkan shipyards is way up there in the Balkans over there. That's uh, that's 300 kilometers from sea. So testing boats for me is hard work, but I do it. I do it all. I sit in Bucky Bucks and I make my little lists of all the mess ups that I've done at sea. And we'll have a series of huge mess ups that, that you can learn from my mistakes if you wish. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to teach you how to navigate. I'm not going to do that. I'm not attempting to teach anybody to navigate. I will just... I'll just speak about what I have done very, very long, that many other people have died for, these, for such mistakes. Some of the mistakes might have not killed me, but I would have definitely lost the ship if they went totally wrong. So there's going to be a series of eight videos of this coming up, people. Uh, male dominancy, art poetry, because we build boats. We sell boats. And men navigate. It's a man's world. The women that, are, that come along and enter into this world are very welcome. We are not better than them. We are not even competing with them. But we are men. And we build boats. And we navigate. People, may the force be with you. All the best. Balkan shipyards. The force is strong. Port of Tsalev, 11 in the morning, as a big vaca sails out, hard on it, I'm sitting high and dry, as one hand 
puts my coffee down. The second lasers my tobacco pipe gently to my lips. The sweet smelling tobacco gets dragged in as it flows over my tongue. My tongue craves for the nicotine that immediately bonds to the caffeine and the yin yang starts the day. A cool breeze slides down the cliff as it heads out to sea. Balkan Bay comes to life as Port Sullivan shifts into gear. At Bucky Bucks, the espresso machine dominates the new day. As the barman knocks the old coffee out, the same double tap. Again, that perfect double tap. A tak tak, tak tak fills the air. Once more, the fine looking Italian machine rumbles away as it injects high pleasure steam through fleshly smelling ground coffee. The pelican Mac Mac spreads his wings as he warms his back in the morning sun. Mac Mac spent his life on the rock. The rock is Mac Mac's little planet. The rock is strong, but it too is getting old. Hi guys, uh, I'm Rail. President of Balkan Shipyards. Next year we're going shunting and we're going shunting big time. Time has come. It's been 10 years and 4 pro builds. This one is number 13 because it's 1 plus 3. It's 4, fourth build from Balkan Shipyards. And we're going to attempt to change the future and bring back shunters. That's what Balkan Shipyards is all about. And may the force be with you. Keep shunting, guys. Balkan shipyards.